course, yes. Thank you so much, Chanter. So hi, my name's Lauren and I am a counsellor and um, psychotherapist. I'm based down in Exeter in Devon um, and I specialise in dealing with obviously a majority of clients, but mainly my specialisms are around like relationships. So I do um, a lot of couples counselling, counselling for individuals around relationships. Um, I specialise in also um, anyone who suffered any sort of type of abuse and trauma, such as domestic abuse, coercive control, um, empowerment for men and for women as well um and also like parenting and particularly solo parenting so um yeah given the fact that everyone here is a single parent or co-parent in some way um you know it's important to obviously acknowledge as well that it's a very different dynamic as well dating and just living life I think you know in in, in that particular instance um I myself am a single parent as well I have a little boy who's seven um, and I've been a solo parent pretty much for all of his life um, since he was three months old. So um, I hope that much of what I talk about isn't just, you know, stuff that I'm plucking out of thin air. It's stuff that I, you know, it's relatable to me as well. Stuff that I've experienced, like friends have experienced, obviously clients as well that come to me and talk about things. Um, which is why, as what Tamsin was saying, you know, it's really nice to have an interactive session of some sort as well. So if you do feel comfortable, please just, you know, chip in if you've got anything to say, or, you know, you can ch use the chat feature as well to type something in, um, and then we can answer any questions or, you know, engage in a different discussion as well. So um, obviously today's session that we're going to be talking about is around dating. Um, and I think we could probably spend days, probably months talking about this subject matter. <laughs> Me and Townsend were just saying um, that lots of people we've noticed recently on the app as well <clears throat> have been talking about dating as well and like the trials and tribulations that come with it as well. So um, the way I've kind of structured this, this, this chat is just looking at some things in particular um, that I notice come up naturally for, for clients, for myself, and obviously um, content that's come up on the app as well. So thinking around about like, you know, when is the right time for dating? And I think, you know, the short answer is, it's gonna be different for everybody. Depending on what your experience is, you know, how long you've been single for, what your previous relationship has been like, um, it's all gonna be quite individual. Um, but I think there's definitely some things that we can all start to maybe think about when we move into dating again, or even thinking about going into that. Um, and one of the main things I think is really important to talk about is that prioritising time for yourself, um, which does seem a bit kind of to the side of dating, because obviously that could potentially involve just actually having some time for yourself. But really getting to know yourself and understanding like what it is that you want for you as an individual person, um, I think is the one of the most important things that you can do moving forward from being, you know, either in a relationship or being a single parent. And the reason why I say that is most people, uh, you know, clients that come and see me, it's about that in a relationship ending and then wanting to fill that void normally with another person. So we end a relationship, we're heartbroken, we have lots of feeling and emotion coming up and it can be really sad and distraught. We're used to having someone and something, you know, to come home to, have some, having someone to talk to, having another person there as well. And when that's ended, even if it's been a healthy relationship or, you know, in some cases, a, a not great relationship, we can still really miss that other person there. So we're very quick, I think, as a society to jump into them wanting something else and somebody else to fill that void as well. And for, for most people, I think there's a, there's a big societal push on that, isn't there? There's a lot of narrative around my other half, my better half, you know, someone that completes you. And actually we're all individual people in our own right. But I genuinely feel like at times we don't allow ourselves that time to really explore who we are as an individual. It's about who we are as a couple. Being the couple is, you know, the big push, like having that boyfriend, having that girlfriend, being married, being a family as well. It needs to be about a bigger, a bigger sense of, of people around you rather than just being an individual. Um, you know, coming from it from a single parent slant as well I feel like there's definitely a lot of stigma attached to that as well as like being on your own as well and if you have a child this push of like you almost like this narrative of like you need to be with somebody else you couldn't possibly cope on your own so I feel like there's this added pressure as well being a single parent that we need to have this other person in our life to be able to manage and cope as well 
which I don't think is very healthy, to be honest, and, you know, for, for a variety of reasons in that. So, you know, when we come out of relationship before thinking about dating again, really spending some time to prioritize yourself and thinking about, you know, what it is that you enjoy. What do you what do you like doing? What do you do want to do for fun? What do you what are your beliefs? What are your values? Really thinking about like the whole bigger picture of really what's going on for you. What do you want for your, you know, your family set up as well? Would you like to bring someone in straight away and have them meet your children? Do you want somebody that's more a companion or more of a romantic relationship? You know, there's so many questions that can be explored, I think, before stepping into a situation where we're inviting somebody else in and we don't allow ourselves that much time to really navigate that. So I don't know if anybody else, you know, feels that sense of, you know, not ever having that time to really explore things um, and or if anyone has actually allowed themselves some time to be able to have, you know, some single space and allow them, allow them to kind of break that mould and not be jumping into relationships and, and giving themselves some single space at all. Yeah, I think I definitely, one of the things for me, I was really surprised uh, once I'd had my son and I was on my own, how many people there were there straight away their question was, Well, when are you gonna date? Or when are you gonna you know, I was kind of like, Oh <laughs> like, and people were almost suggesting it before I'd even really thought about it. Yes, that's it. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like there's this big societal push, isn't there, around like needing to have this other person. And you know, speaking from like my own personal experience, you know, when, when I left my relationship, I completely relocated and moved to a different town. Um so it wasn't as easy for me to kind of think, oh, I'm going to start, you know, like dating or anything again. And at the time, my son was only three months old. So it was very, very early days of being, of being, you know, being a parent. But I definitely felt this need almost in me to find somebody else because I was so used to having somebody in my life. I almost wanted to be Lauren before I'd had my son. I wanted to be that going out, that single person wanting to do the dating thing again. But actually my whole life had changed I had a son now my headspace had changed and everything and when I was trying to step into this space for dating again it it just wasn't gelling with who I was now and actually what my setup and my situation was so I think subconsciously definitely I just took some time naturally to decide to step back from that because when I was dating in those very very early days it wasn't what I would consider to be healthy dating at all it was just you know random going out here and there and whatever else and there was no kind of connection or substance to it it was just about feeling that need to be with somebody else and with another almost trying to fill that lonely void of not having another person in my life as well so you know going through like my own process of then stepping into having some therapy myself and training to be a therapist as well doing that work on myself has really really allowed me to open up and expand my understanding of what it is that I need and what I want like from a relationship and then being able to you know facilitate that moving forwards as well so you know prioritizing yourself is a huge you know is a, is a huge thing you know and you know giving yourself just just some time really just to like relax and to be and to you know to sit in that space and I appreciate how difficult it can be to, to not be with another person or maybe have some help with the children or just have that person that you know that you can contact at the end of the day when things have been a bit crappy and you just want to have a little moan and, and vent out. But it can be so empowering to allow yourself to have some space and really just be single and get to know you, who you are as an individual before you then, you know, invite somebody else in. Because I feel like what can happen a lot of the time is that we step into relationship and then we go into compromise mode as well we start to compromise what we want to fit in and it can then quickly turn into that square peg round hole situation where we're trying to force something because it's there and it's available and it's easy as well because we want it and we need it and rather than it coming from like a healthy dynamic it's coming from a from a need rather than I want to have a relationship it's that I need to therefore I'm going to make something fit and make something work and then we start to compromise ourselves as well in that way. So I feel like definitely having some, you know, time to yourself and understanding as well, you know, things around boundaries, you know, having setting some boundaries for yourself. You know, what is it that you want? What behaviors do you accept and don't accept in relationship? Is it okay for you to have somebody in your life that 
you know, you only see once a week? Or is it okay for you that, you know, they don't respond to text for days on end? Is it okay for you that they want to prioritise their own family and they don't want to make any effort with your family? It's understanding, isn't it? What's okay for you? What, be what behaviours are okay and what behaviours are not? And putting some boundaries in place for yourself to really respect yourself. So when we do move into a relationship, we're really secure and have some understanding about what it is that I want and then kind of not faltering on those non-negotiable things as well. Mm. I think that's such good advice and it's it's so important because I guess for a lot of people, like and it, this does come up on the feed quite a bit, some people have been in really long-term relationships, you know, mm. some people might have been in, you know, married or with their partner for five, 10, 15 years, and then the relationship breaks down. Mm. It's then really hard to, be yourself again because you've spent such a long period of time being part of a pair yeah. to then on your own you really need to take that time to to learn that again and after having children you're not the same person are, are we you know I'm completely different after having my son mm -hmm. um so actually you're learning to be a new version of yourself but on your own yeah. as opposed to part of a couple Definitely so. I think that's a really, really good point as well that you brought up there as well. It's that learning who you are now, because as I said, you know, I was still trying to be Lauren pre-child and I wasn't, yes, like she's definitely still there and she loves to come out and, you know, have a, you know, crazy nights out and have some fun and all the rest of it. But actually my, you know, my job for the most part is to be a parent now. And, you know, do I just want to be bringing, you know, somebody that I probably wouldn't classify as being, you know, a healthy person into my life, into my home? Definitely not. No, I don't. I don't want to be doing that. I want to have, you know, a secure relationship. I want to have someone that I know is going to be kind and caring towards my child eventually. And that's someone that I could introduce into my family. You know, it's that learning about this is who I am now and almost like letting go of maybe like parts of the person that you were before and understanding that this whole new setup with having, you know, a new family environment, becoming a single parent is really challenging. And whoever comes into that needs to be really understanding of that as well, don't they? And yeah, it, it can be it can be extremely hard to kind of weed out who is right, who isn't for my family. And the only way you know is by testing the water and going out there and doing it. But by doing the work beforehand, like having, you know, like very clear boundaries, having like non-negotiables and really understanding what it is that you want from a relationship before stepping out there because it can be such a confusing place. Can, can it be such, it's such a minefield, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, especially as well with all this, you know, the COVID situation as well, because we've all been so removed as well from having any sort of contact and relationship. And I know for a lot of people, it's all had to shift to online dating, which is a whole other kettle of fish in itself, isn't it? And, you know, I don't know if anybody really, you know, if anyone would like to share any of that, <laughs> any of their stories of online dating I'm sure there's many out there um you know some some people I hear have great fantastic success stories for meeting people online and you know they go on to like get married have their own families I think that's absolutely fantastic but there's a lot out there especially particular apps where it's not about you know having a proper relationship it's about having you know one-off hookups or just some fun and things like that and it's knowing isn't it like where to go for that as well and actually setting the expectation of maybe if I step into some online dating with particular apps that might only be for a certain demographic rather than actually maybe looking for something long term if that's what you know you're wanting as well so it's 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 finding the, like almost the right space as well isn't it for what you want moving forward for sure yes <laughs> No, definitely. And I know um, a couple of things that have kind of come up on the feed and people have mm -hmm. asked, and I think just because obviously you've mentioned online dating, it, it uh, fits quite nicely. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have kind of asked, obviously, we on here, we are all single parents. Everyone here has children. How do you kind of navigate that? Is that something that you it's best to kind of be really upfront and honest with? Is it, mm -hmm. you know, do you, when do you bring that in because obviously you don't if you're online dating you don't want almost your first sentence to be like hi I'm Tam I've got a five-year-old how are you <laughs> like it's a <laughs> oh, no. nice it's definitely a nice bit of a weird opener isn't it but um that's definitely something that I know worries a lot of people is perhaps how upfront and honest they should be with their circumstances with their situation um 
Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer at all for that. It goes back to what's going on for you and just that, you know, the individual stuff that's coming up as well. You know, the things that I would always get people to question, you know, in themselves before stepping into that space and obviously writing a profile or divulging whatever information they want is, you know, really be acknowledging of yourself because, you know, if you are... A single parent and you've got one two three four five however many children that you've got you're not going to be able to hide that for a, for a long period of time are you? It's like, we can't pretend that they don't exist you know it's going to come out at some point isn't it you know and for most people you know our children are our main priority as well so you know the times that we can date maybe the days of the week that we can date is all going to be dictated potentially around you know if you can get childcare, if you're co-parenting when the other parents having them school time summer holidays half terms and things it's all going to have a huge impact isn't it as well so you know for, to, for, to start with I always say you know really acknowledge yourself and your situation because if we move too far away from being authentic with, with ourselves I think that's where it can channel a lot into that feeling of not being good enough because Internet dating is, is a minefield in itself, and I feel like it can be quite a dangerous place mentally for a lot of people because it's that culture. If we pick up the phone, we see a picture, or we go, oh, they've got a dog, I don't like dogs. Oh, they've got a child, I don't want someone with a child. Oh, it says they don't want more kids. And we, it's instantly swipe, no, moving on. It's very brutal, isn't it? You know, we're just looking at a picture and a sentence, and everyone's like, yep, yeah, no, yep, yeah, no. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible place to be. If we're not being our authentic selves, I feel like, and you're putting, you know, maybe hiding stuff or not putting stuff on there as well, and people are choosing to want to interact with you or not, again, it can conjure up that feeling of, are they liking me because of the things that I've written or I've not written? And I think that's what I think people need to really consider, you know, if you're going on there and, you know, kind of not saying anything about having kids because you want to attract people because you think it's going to put them off. Are they the right people to be interacting with in the first place is what I would suggest to people to consider, because, yes, you might get a higher rate of people maybe being interested, but effectively you're going to have to tell them at some point that you've got a child or children, you know, and yeah, so my, you know, I don't have you know, you know, strict advice on, you know, do it, don't do it. I just think it's just always something to consider that, you know, if you are going to put yourself out there and you don't want to be upfront and honest about it, that's fine. But it's just understanding that, you know, at some point you're always going to have to tell that person <laughs> anyway that you have a child. And if that's a caveat for someone to go, oh, yeah, well, I don't want to I don't want to be with you then. How is that going to leave you feeling? as well you know we have to almost have a little bit more of a thick skin around that don't we and that's not about you that's not that you're not good enough you know you've got a child therefore you know you, you're not you know you're not okay today that's about their stuff that they can't handle or they're not prepared to step into that space it's always about that other person isn't it and if you are putting yourself out there and you're putting on there and being really honest you're like yep I'm a you know like I'm a single parent or a co-parent or you know, I've got a child and people are interacting with you they know that already don't they you know so it's already starting from that place of authenticity and honesty as well isn't it but I appreciate you know it's you know it's a, it's a personal <laughs> it's a personal thing and it can be really tricky and I would be lying if I said I hadn't done it you know years ago when I've tried internet dating there have been times where I have put I've got a child and times where I haven't because I felt like oh Maybe it is going to be off-putting. And then I've had to really check myself and go, but I do have a son and I would never want to pretend that I didn't. So for me, you know, I'm always up front with anybody about, you know, I have a child and I am a single parent because if they're going to be in my life and be part of my life, then that's, that's authentically me and who I am. But I do completely understand when people don't want to and the reasons why, why as well. But yeah, it's just it's considering it, isn't it? The different options and the different avenues to go down, I think, with with Internet dating and things, because that feeling that comes up a lot, I've noticed on the app as well, of like not feeling good enough, like I'm not good enough today. I feel like some of this can really channel into that as well. Which can be really tricky. Yeah, for a lot of people. 
definitely and I was literally just going to talk about that as well because um, I know we had a chat just before we kind of went live on here there was um, there's comments quite frequently but there was one today that really stood out that a, a user posted on the app about not feeling good enough after a bad experience and I think that's something that's really important to talk about that you know it does not every day is going to be positive necessarily not not every first day is going to be the one and be the you know not what you expect and I guess what a lot of people want to know is kind of how then how do you pick yourself up and how do you kind of move forward when you've not had a great experience and actually you you have come away thinking oh god is it me is it my situation is it oh, I just feel like I've done something wrong um mm. I think that yeah a lot of people would kind of like a bit of your view on that yeah definitely so and it's you know i think you know again i can hold my hands up and say i've definitely <laughs> come away from dates feeling like oh god you know and other times you know things have been good and then they haven't materialized into anything anyway as well so i think it's um you know when we when we when we step into a situation of not knowing somebody and going on a first date we all like to put our best foot forward don't we as well we're always you know you know like dolled up nicely and we try to say the right things and all the rest of it and I think communication, it always stands out for me, can be quite lacking because we don't always communicate properly. When we're stepping into something, especially having first dates as well, we're coming from a place of, you know, maybe like hope, expectation, if we've had a really bad breakup and we really want this to be the one and we're really searching for something, it come really loaded, can't it, with a lot of hope and expectation as well. Sometimes that person might not be on the same level as well. Sometimes we just don't gel with a person, do we? You know, and I think, you know, coming away from a first date as well and having like mixed feelings about it, I think always allow yourself some time to process what's gone on. You know, sit with the feelings that are coming up. You know, did you feel really excited about it? Did you genuinely feel like maybe you said something, I don't know, to offend that person or they said something to offend you? And almost like, you know, just not pick it apart completely and sit there dwelling on it for too long, but just sit in the feelings more so around like what has come up for you? How did you feel after that day? Do you feel like that person is connected, you know, to you? Would you like to see them again? I always like to give people at least, you know, two chances, I think, because first dates can always be quite, um, like I said, quite superficial, can't they, around things as well. You know, we're not always fully ourselves, we're on our best behaviour and everything. So maybe allowing yourself to have a second date and doing something that you feel really relaxed, doing something that you enjoy and having fun as well, you know, going back you know if you feel like it's you know a safe space and a healthy space and you actually want to engage with that person again and obviously haven't done anything untoward you know give people a second chance because we can all be very different on day one and I think you know give it allowing people a little bit of leeway especially at the moment with everybody coming out of lockdown and people being a lot more cautious I feel like as well we've kind of lost that ability to really communicate properly as well everyone you know is like little heads on screens for most for most of the year haven't they and we've almost lost that human interaction as well with people so you know having some allowance for people around dating and maybe it not going so well but if you're really struggling with that inner feeling of you know I don't feel like I'm good enough or I've done something really wrong you know be really honest with yourself about it like have you actually done anything wrong you know why is it that you're not feeling good enough because all of us will be coming from a very different space and I think previous relationship has a lot to do with that and it's understanding you know if you've had a really horrible breakup and for anyone who has experienced any sort of like abusive relationship controlled relationship as well that can really channel into our feeling of like not being good enough as well so I think understanding and being really kind to yourself as well about dating is super important so yeah coming away from it definitely sitting with the feeling you know maybe giving someone a second chance if it's something that you're a bit you know mixed about you know but that feeling of not you know feeling good enough I would always say to people if you are in that space you know go and talk to somebody about that even you know professionally you know go and see a therapist about that feeling of not good enough because it really needs to be explored and worked on because 
it, it, it's not true. Everybody is good enough. When we have that internal narrative of like not feeling good enough, it's historical stuff that's come, you know, from like childhood, adolescence, from other people as well, you know, and it can be very much internalized and then projected into romantic relationship as well. So it's not that people are not good enough, that you're not a good enough person to have a healthy relationship. You're not good enough because you're a single parent and there's all of this stigma as well, but it definitely needs to be unpacked and unpicked so we can move forward into healthy relationships. So I'm obviously a huge advocate for having therapy and counselling and exploring that. And it's, you know, it's always money well spent to sit and learn about yourself and understand what you want in relationship and move through it is so important. So yes, I hope that kind of answers that for you. That's my, that's my take on it. <laughs> no, definitely. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions that have come through um, in the chat both um to the group and a couple privately so there's um one that's come through kind of so how do you learn to trust again or kind of any tips for building that again I'm guessing obviously for someone who might have been um hurt in the past by a previous partner might have had you know been cheated on or something like that that has broken trust in kind of a future relationship definitely trust is a massive thing and trust is also very contextual as well so what I consider to be trust for somebody will be very different to what every single one of you feel like is trust as well you know building up trust again for me comes back to having boundaries in place when we've been hurt you know it's, it's a devastating feeling and nobody wants to step back into that space again so understanding, you know, what your boundaries are with things and almost having like little, little goals to get to with people. You know, when we meet people in relationship, you know, being really giving of everything can be a really vulnerable space. So I never really advocate for people to go in, you know, with a complete stranger and start divulging everything about their life because it's so exposing and leaves you in a really vulnerable place. Being able to set boundaries around sharing a little bit seeing how that person responds to that you know allowing yourself some time to grow with that person whether it's in a friendship a work dynamic a relationship you know and then being able to build on that again maybe opening the door a little bit more for them letting them in sharing some other personal stuff as well you know and also noticing if they're reciprocal of that as well because the way we build trust in relationship is that give and take situation, isn't it? We share something, we can see if that person can sit with us and hold it with us. Maybe they share something back at some other time as well. I cannot advocate enough everyone to read this book. I'm sure to bring it this time. It's an amazing book. It's called Set Boundaries, Find Peace. <laughs> enough for this book I think it's absolutely fantastic and I don't know if you can put it or I can probably put it on the link to this event as well so everyone can see it but it's about 10 pounds you can get it on Amazon um the lady that's written it she's a therapist she's an American therapist and her book it's such an easy read because it's all broken down into sections and it's like you know what are boundaries how to set boundaries and then even breaks it up into looking at you know setting boundaries in romantic relationship in friendships there's some little exercises in there there's questions to ask yourself and you know anyone who has been through any sort of like controlling or abusive relationship as well it really goes into detail around that as well because having boundaries after coming out of a controlled relationship is really hard because they've been completely removed as well so that learning to trust and build up boundaries again this book will definitely, definitely <laughs> help with that. I use it a lot in my practice. I read it and advocate it, you know, for myself as well. I check in with myself with my own boundaries with things of it. And I'm forever telling my clients to go and read it. It's a really good user-friendly book um, that anybody can just pick up, start to flick through. You don't have to do it, you know, front to back. You can just go to certain sections and read it. So that building of trust, I think, always to me comes back to implementing some boundaries and taking things really slowly and building it back at your own pace and not having someone else push yeah push for you <clears throat> I think that's brilliant advice thank you definitely taking it at your own pace is so so important um there's then another question that's come through so um, someone's asking, talking around kind of trauma and PTSD from a past relationship mm -hmm. When and kind of how do you then 
approach that with a new partner so again obviously that wouldn't be something you'd open with on your first date but how do you then kind of talk about that because it that isn't something that you just goes away overnight because you meet a new person that's something that stays with you and is potentially going to affect your current and future relationships definitely so and you know as somebody who I've, I've worked in the field of you know working with people who've experienced like abuse and trauma for about seven years now I again I always say it's about taking it at your own pace again everything is always about you being in control of that you don't have to share anything if you don't want to if you feel like you are in a space where you want to share parts of that previous relationship then you can but, you know never feel any sort of expectation or pressure or I should be sharing all of this and sharing this part of me with someone it's your story it's your history if you want to be giving of that information then you can once we've shared it it's out there isn't it and how that person responds or what they do with that then we cannot control that so if you're sharing it I feel like it needs to definitely come from a place of you just wanting to share that and not having any expectation of anything coming back because we don't know how that person's going to react or respond to it in any way, shape or form. If you've been through any sort of like trauma or PTSD, again, definitely heavily advocate for having some sort of therapy, whether it's like a group setting, peer support or like one to one therapy around that and understanding what you've gone through and start to do some like personal healing before maybe stepping into something with a new partner, because new partners if they're not aware can do things that are triggering sometimes we don't even know what our triggers are as well so if we have some you know some understanding and some self-healing around that first it's far easier than to step into something and be coming at it from a more healthier angle because if we go into something and then that new partner starts saying or doing something that's triggering of the past it's going to be quite a traumatic experience isn't it and that's going to be quite yeah detrimental for both people isn't it so I just feel like yeah having some therapy definitely some self self healing around that and always going at your own pace and knowing that you you know it's your stuff and you never have to share anything that you don't want to no that's great advice thank you I hope to the person that messaged me privately about that I hope that answers your question um I've had another one then to me privately which is are there any subconscious blockers that you've come across? For example, I feel, I feel ready in myself to date, but sometimes I feel that I subconsciously sabotage my own efforts in the date without meaning to. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something you've kind of come across and have you got any tips in that scenario? OK, yeah, definitely so. And it's yeah, I think it's. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm only laughing because I know that this, this comes up a lot, especially for, for really for women more so. You know, I don't find for men so much that this comes up so much. And I find like eating is a big thing as well around like self-sabotaging as well. So, yeah, so I hear what you're saying, like when you're on the date as well, this kind of, you know, almost like pushing away of things. Um, <clears throat> and using food as well can be another can be another way as well that we self-sabotage. If we eat a lot and then we don't feel good about ourselves, then we don't want to date as well is another one that that comes up quite frequently as well I think the fact that you know whoever you know whoever sent that message has an awareness that they're doing it is a really fantastic thing to start with because you are aware of what's going on you know going into that a little bit deeper you know I would say to people you know sit with the stuff that comes up really acknowledge what the feelings are to me the feelings are the most important things you know what is coming up for you when you're on that date what's coming up for you when afterwards when like you know you've processed that if you're acknowledging that you know there is this level of self-sabotage you know self-consciously write it down writing it down and getting it out of like you know your body and your head is such a, such an important and cathartic method if you like you know i am self-sabotaging why am i self-sabotaging and it can be quite therapeutic and enlightening as to what actually comes up because we know it because it's there and it's subconscious we might not actually verbally say it out loud but even by writing it down it's it can be quite interesting as to what comes out so journaling around this kind of stuff can be super helpful because it brings out all of the sub subconscious stuff on paper so mind mapping journaling bullet pointing writing lists around it as well but you know if there's something going on there and there's a block it is understanding the why and with my clients I'm always a why person I'm like but why but why but why <laughs> until they finally get to a place of going like I know why 
but there will undoubtedly be a reason as to why subconsciously it's there it's just finding a way of bringing that more into the conscious for yourself yeah but writing things down I find is a really really useful tool for that afterwards like you know what, what is it about dating because if you're feeling ready and you're actively doing it but then there's something stopping you it's like what is that about is it that feeling of maybe I just don't feel good enough or maybe I'm scared to let somebody in fully I was hurt before and I don't want to be hurt again you know for for some people it can be the fact that they've actually really enjoyed building their single life and although they want to date it's quite fearful and to want to bring someone back into that again because they've created you know a life for themselves again so it's, it's just understanding isn't it yeah the whys of it all for sure <laughs> no I love that thank you I think yeah journaling um, sounds like a really good um, option for that so I've got um, another question then um, so someone who's been single for almost a year uh, her son is now sorry no you're fine sorry I'm a child I said, I said, I'm really dark in here and I was like turn the light on <laughs> oh bless no it's absolutely fine so the question is um someone who's been single for almost a year now uh, her son is starting to stay overnight with his dad so she is thinking about trying to date on her free nights um, but she is worried about other people kind of frowning on that and thinking that she's jumping into the wrong relationship or not kind of doing what she should be doing as a parent um, and actually I guess kind of tips for kind of that and confidence and being able to if, if you know it's right for you not necessarily listening to those other voices. Definitely I think you've just answered the question there you can sit in my feet and do it there you go. <laughs> That's definitely it. It's listening to yourself, thinking about, you know, I, I, I will give my clients a sheet and all it says, it's got three columns and it says, I need, I want, I deserve. And just start filling stuff out, you know, just make three columns and do that. What, what do I need? What do I want? What do I deserve? And just start to fill it out. And if you want to date and if you feel like you're ready to and that's what you need in your life and you feel like you deserve to have somebody in your life that you can have adult conversation you can have fun with and you know do adult things with as well why why can't you do that i say you no know, try dialing down those voices as well because nine times out of ten there are probably actively people in that person's life saying these things or it's stuff that they're thinking internally as well. And it's understanding, is it my stuff that's coming out? Do I actually feel like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this? This isn't appropriate for a single single mum with a young child to be doing this. Or are there actually people in her life kind of like shoving this narrative towards her as well? Or him, sorry, I shouldn't just assume, sorry. <laughs> Whoever, male or female, with that. But, you know, it's dialing down the voices and the narrative that's going on externally and really listening to what's going on in here. You know, I always just say like, don't listen to the shoulds, just listen to what it is that you want to do. If you want to go out and you want to date and you want to try doing that, why, why can't you? Is there any real reason why you can't? And it's just having almost that kind of conversation with yourself, isn't it? Of going, why can't I? Why can't I? And if somebody thinks you're a bad person, because you're dating and you want to have an adult relationship with somebody that's on them that's their stuff isn't it that's not about you you know you have your life go and enjoy it I think it's a fantastic thing when people are ready to date and you you know if you do have childcare or someone that you co-parent with and you can have that time to really start you know exploring again like who am I you know because we all deserve to have you know friendships close relationships you know families partners new partners in our lives you know what why not do that you know there's enough stigma attached to it isn't there with with single parenting we don't need to be internally doing that to ourselves for sure so dialing down the voices and you know going forward and doing what it is that you want to do and having some real confidence behind that as well and knowing that it's perfectly okay to do whatever it is that you want to do no, I love that advice. And what I loved the three columns that you mentioned. Can you just, what, what were the three columns again? Just in case anyone missed the three, I thought that was great. I need, I want, I deserve. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> if, I no, can, I love if I can put the sheet up somewhere, I'll put it up and then everyone can have it. But yes, it's literally just that. Just looking, you know, what are my needs? 
what are my wants and what do I deserve to have? Because we don't, I think just as a society, ever really sit in that space and look at what our needs and our wants are because it can be perceived as like, oh, that's a bit selfish or a bit self-indulgent. But actually we need to understand what we need and want and more so when we're single parents as well, because our needs can be so depleted because there's other stuff going on, there's kids, there's, you know, finances, there's running of house, there's all sorts of stuff going on, isn't there? Actually, our needs can be really shoved down and our wants. So it's, that's what I'm saying, you know, going back to that prioritising of yourself, sitting and doing like little exercises like this, like what is it that I need and I want? And if it is like, I want to start dating and I want to find a new partner, how does that look? How do I go about doing that? You know, it's okay to live your life how you want to live it, for sure. <laughs> I love that. I think that's great. Like you said, you we don't do that enough. And that that kind of three column, you could do that for so many different aspects of your life, not just dating. You kind of think, yes, actually, sure. yeah, what do I need? So yeah definitely you know do it for work do it for friendships do it for family do it for you know absolutely everything isn't it it's 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 sitting and thinking about like what are my needs you know because we all have them and if we have felt especially like over the last 18 months very depleted of you know I haven't had really much human contact I haven't had any you know physical hugs or anything from anybody it's really important to notice you know like I just need to have like a companion or somebody that I can sit and have an adult conversation with or go out and do like a fun activity with or just know that they're at the end of the phone and I can speak to somebody. It's really important to acknowledge your own needs. So when we do move forward into relationship, we're not coming from this really depleted place of like, I just, I'm so depleted that I like my needs are dry. Therefore, I'm just going to attach to anyone who's coming along if we can build up our own needs and have our own awareness of them, that's a really healthy space to be. So when we do step into relationship, we're not doing it from that, you know, square peg round hole situation of like, I'm just going to try and make, make something and somebody fit because my needs are so depleted. If I've acknowledged my needs and start working on that, then I'm actually going to be in a better, healthier space to invite more healthier people into my life and find someone that's probably more aligned. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant thank you so much I think that's all the questions that I've had so thank you everybody for asking them um yeah that was great I don't know if you want to just kind of um let everyone know your website your Instagram and then they know where to find you if they want to kind of learn a bit more about you see what you do sure no it's been absolutely fantastic and thank you so much everyone for like participating and throwing in questions there I think it's lovely to make it more personal rather than me just you know talking at you about stuff that may not be relevant um my website is elliotcounseling.com and my instagram page is lauren elliot counseling um I do online therapy face-to-face -face therapy you know and I'm on like the Frolo app as well um if I can I will put the book on there and on the sheet if I can work out how to upload that or I can give it I can give it to Townsend and she can do it but definitely this book is so helpful like I was saying about like the boundaries I think you know it's not even just with dating just with life and work and everything I think the other one that I was going to um, just point out as well this one's really good it's called The Power of Attachment and that looks at all of our different like attachment styles. So we all have different ones, depending on like, you know, how we've been brought up, the experiences that we've been through. And why I really like this book is because it's similar to this one where you can just pick it up and dip in and out. It's structured in a really easy way to read as well and has exercises in it. But it also looks at relationships. So if my attachment style is say different to Townsend's attachment style, there might be some, you know, issues that come up. And, you know, when we're going into relationship as well, it's understanding as well that everybody has their own different attachment styles because that can really clash as well. So they're two really interesting books to have and to read to think about what's going on for us, what we want, and then moving forward into the dating world as well, because yes, it is a minefield out there. <laughs> the best of luck of it to, to everybody he's, he's currently dating, for sure. <laughs> so, yes. No, thank you so much, been absolutely brilliant. I, tonight's been absolutely fantastic. And I think, um, yeah, a lot of people, we've all got a, a lot out of it. So thank you and thank you everybody for coming i hope you have a lovely rest of your evening um as i said in the chat i'll pop the recording and all the links on the feed tomorrow for you and i will do the links to kind of the books that lauren's mentioned as well so thank you so much everybody thank you so much bye